What's happening in the silver market? So what is going on in the silver market? So just in the last few weeks, we've gone from $18 up to above $21. And now we're back down to, as you can see here, uh, just over $19. So what? Everyone's asking, what is going on? Well, as you guys know, I've done some videos in recent weeks about the uh, short squeeze that's been going on. And we did see the run up in that price. And to be honest, I didn't do a follow up video uh, on that because I thought that rally was going to be short lived. Now, yes, we look at the LBMA and well, what's that down another 45 million ounces or so. You can see that the LBMA is getting drained. So from a supply demand point of view, it's looking bullish silver. And right here, you can see that uh, this month, the LBMA has revealed that the LBMA vault silver inventories in London are falling sharply due to client demand for physical. So some contributors noted that increased client demand led to a number of physical silver exports. So it's pretty clear that's happening, right? We all agree. Yep. Cool. We're on the same page there. And when silver was rallying in the last couple of weeks, it even made mainstream media, CNBC, in India. So let's check out this clip. I'm looking at crude clearly, but I'm looking at silver as well because we're looking at very strong gains into this one in this week as well. We're trading at a three-month highs and the prices have gained up by 8% in this week. When you look at the international range, we've traded between $18 on the lower side to nearly $27 per ounce on the higher side. In the Indian markets, the current year range has been from 51000 to 73000 and we're trading at around 61000 right now. The, 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 the highest that you have seen in case of uh, silver prices ever has been at around 79,000 rupees per kg. And we did come close to those kind of levels in this year. It has been a very volatile year when you look at that in case of silver there. But the markets will keep an eye also on the fundamentals here where you are looking at the physical buying being on the stronger side, not so much in case of investment buying, but the physical buying in Asian markets, in Europe, in Middle East has been quite strong when you look at silver. For the Indian markets though, the numbers are even better. If you look at the COMEX warehouse inventories, they are at just about 313 million ounces, which actually is the lowest since June 2020. Also, when you look at the LBMA vault holdings, those are at around 28,000 tons, which is the lowest since July 2016 as well. So inventories, mine supplies in case of silver have been on the weaker side there. For India, though, the imports that we are looking at are the third highest on record at around 6,200 tons of silver import is what we've done in this year already until now. All-time high number was in 2015 at 7,530 tons. So very strong silver buying, whether it's about industrial demand, gifting, rural buying, all of that really seems to be picking up for a second straight year into this one. This is what we've done in sense of Indian imports. And as you can see, it has been a rising uh, year after year. 2020 was COVID year and the last year as well saw lesser imports. But this year, as you can see, we are looking at a stronger number there. The next chart that comes on your screen is about the global supply and demand numbers. That tells you that we are looking at a deficit for a second straight year this time around. 2021 was a deficit year, first time after 2015, after six years of enough supplies into the market. But as you can see, last year demand was higher and this year the demand is expected even higher, so much so that the Silver Institute says that you could be looking at record silver demand for 2022 this time around. When you look at the deficit numbers, Silver Institute expects deficit at around 2,024 tons. Metal Focus is estimating it at 71.5 million tons versus 51.8 million ounces of a deficit in the previous year as well. Yep, so as I mentioned, LBMA silver inventories drop by 45 million ounces in September. So I mentioned that. So it's all, you know, should be bullish for silver, right? And Eric shared this chart and just said the last time OPEC was hostile to the US, the silver US dollar price went 5x uh, first and ended up doing 40x. And the question is, will history repeat? Because we've got OPEC at the moment that are saying, no, stuff you Biden, uh, we're cutting uh, production and we're going into an energy crisis. We're already in one. So all of this is bullish for silver, right? Well, why did silver fall? Why is silver now falling from hitting 
$21. Well, it's all about liquidity, folks. So you can see beautifully from this chart, uh, foreign holdings of treasuries at the Fed and the dollar index. When there is a sell-off of foreign holdings of treasuries at the Fed, you can see that the dollar index spikes. Now, why is this happening? Well, people are selling bonds, selling treasuries, and as you can see in the UK, selling gilts because they need liquidity. They need liquidity. They need US dollars. And you know, so in the UK, you guys probably know uh, the pension funds over there, highly leveraged. And as yields are rising, uh, the bond prices were falling. All of a sudden, they're getting margin calls. So guess what they got to do? They got to sell uh, those gilts. Uh, you have BlackRock that said, you know what, we're not buying anymore. And pretty much forced... Uh, the Bank of England to come in. Now, the Bank of England have said they've got three days, all these pension funds and whatnot have got three days to sort out their balance sheet and to to sell what they need to sell uh, before they pull out of that. Well, let's, let's see what they do there. Um, but it's all about liquidity. And liquidity is being drained from the markets by central banks. And so institutions are selling assets. They're selling bonds, treasuries, to get their hands on liquidity, on predominantly US dollars. And as the Fed continues raising rates more aggressively than other central banks, I've been saying this for a long time with Australia, and Australia, what did the RBA do? They only raised by 25 basis points. And uh, I said, well, that spread between... The US and Australia means that the Aussie dollar is going to fall. And what happened? Eh, it's falling. It's falling. And I expect it to fall. And I, you know, I've been talking about the dollar milkshake theory, how I own US dollars and why I own that. And I've been holding that for a while, even when the trade was going the other way. And a lot of people didn't you know, agree with me. Uh, well, that is absolutely looking beautiful for me right now. And if the Fed does raise by 75 basis points, which, what, 92% of the market is predicting, that's going to put more downward pressure on the Aussie dollar. And so there's a liquidity event happening. And so people are selling assets. What happens next is people start selling stocks. So once they've sold bonds, uh, treasuries, gilts, etc., they're going to start selling stocks. Now, part of this, they're also selling gold and silver. And that's why we're seeing this volatility in the precious metals market is because liquidity is king right now. And for our finance uncut insiders, uh, I have shared my portfolio and I have shared how I recently sold uh, one of my largest positions, uh, a 10 bagger on a on a on a coal stock and uh, the amount of liquidity uh that that i am holding and why am i holding it i'm holding it for um to be able to purchase assets cents on the dollar and you know so i i do think we're going to see stocks fall significantly next as all these companies Look, we've got banks in trouble. Credit Suisse, you've probably heard of Deutsche Bank, HSBC. I said back in 2020 that those three banks were the ones to keep an eye on. There's going to be a bank failure. It's going to be one of those three banks, if not all three. And what are we seeing at the moment? Well, we've seen uh, the Swiss, Na Swiss National Bank just do a, uh, a, uh, a, a deal with the Fed to get some dollars. In fact, what was it? 3.1 billion from memory. Uh, or was it 3.1 3, 3 billion? Um, 3.1 billion or 3.1 trillion? I should have had the numbers for you guys. And what did Credit Swiss need? Well, exactly 3 billion or 3 trillion. I can't remember the number. Anyway, forgive me, guys. Uh, you can find out, leave a comment below and, and let me know what that is. So there's a liquidity event happening. And this is what I've been talking about for some time talking about why I hold US dollars. Uh, and you know what? 
Uh, Jim Rogers holds US dollars as well. Let's just cut to a recent clip that uh, he did on uh, Wall Street Silver. <laughs> what are you, what are you keeping your eye on right now? Like we're seeing the the US dollar is super strong right now. Of course, the the Fed is trying to keep it as strong as possible and prop it up. But what are you keeping your eye on to see like the death of the US dollar? Is it real estate? Is it the bond market? What are you keeping your eye closely on? Well, as you may remember, I own a lot of US dollars and have for a while. Uh, I still expect one last big move up uh, when the turmoil gets bad. So I'm watching the dollar. I have to watch the Fed. I know they're in confidence, but still you have to watch them because they have a lot of money. So Mr. Putin, one has to watch Mr. Putin in Ukraine. If there's somehow peace, commodity prices are going to go down a lot. Uh, stocks will go up a lot and everybody will think things are okay for a while. So you have to watch all of these things. I don't particularly like having to watch these things, but yeah. I live in a live in the same world you do. So, Jim, looking at uh, Powell, you said earlier you think he's going to make one more move. What if uh, what if he doesn't? Do you think the Fed will lose all credibility if they, uh, let's say, pause these rate hikes too soon? Do you think they'll completely lose all credibility? You know, we've had uh, three central banks in U.S. history. The first two disappeared for many good reasons. This one will eventually disappear because they keep making so many mistakes. Mm -hmm. They don't have any credibility with me. I have to pay attention to them because they have so much money, obviously, <laughs> and, and so much influence with all that money. But no, I don't think these guys know what they're doing. Uh, whatever they do, they're mainly worried about their jobs. And not worried about what's going to happen to you and me and our kids. So there you go. Jim Rogers is holding US dollars as well, just like myself. And I did this video a few weeks ago. Uh, is gold and silver the best investment right now? And in this video, talk about the dollar milkshake theory, Brent Johnson's dollar milkshake theory. By the way, for Australian investors, uh, Brent Johnson has a target on the Aussie dollar going sub 40. That's sub 40, we're at about 62 and a half now. He's sub 40. And actually some other analysts and traders have now come out and think that the Aussie dollar is gonna uh, go below that and, and actually touch 30 US cents. Now I can't get my head around that, but it all comes down to this. I did this video, Australia's coming economic collapse, and I copped a lot of heat for this video because in it, uh, I kind of compared, <clears throat> or John Adams did, and other economists compared Australia's situation with Sri Lanka. Everyone said, oh, Australia it can't happen. You know, Australia's got commodities. Yeah, our number one export, coal, uh, which we sell to get US dollars. And what is our politicians doing? They're wanting to ban coal. They're wanting to ban uh, a lot of these resources uh, and and uh, hydrocarbons. That means we're going to be receiving less US dollars. In this video, I talked about the potential for a balance of payments crisis in Australia. Talked about the Australian debt levels and how uh, the RBA uh, will will likely chicken out. Well, they basically they raise and uh, follow the, the the US to protect the currency, pop the debt bubble, housing. That's going to cause a lot of pain or they start easing and they don't raise uh, and keep up with the Fed <clears throat> and, well, let the let the dollar collapse. And uh, they kind of show their hand with their latest rate rise of only 25 basis points. And what happened? Well, the dollar has uh, significantly fallen since then. I'm happy about it because that's what I thought they would do. And so it's all about liquidity at the moment. And it all stems back to this video I did earlier in the year, will the Fed destroy the US dollar or asset prices? And well, you know, I talked about the political aspect of inflation and the Fed are raising rates more aggressively than say the RBA, for example, uh, which <clears throat> is going to hurt uh, other countries, uh, the, the, the currencies, going to increase uh, inflation or CPI in those countries. 
in particular in Australia, as our Aussie dollar falls, that means our import prices rise, which puts pressure, upward pressure on CPI, which ultimately puts pressure back on uh, the RBA to raise rates, to combat that. So what we're going to do is create a currency crisis and ultimately we're going to have to pop the debt bubble unless <clears throat> Jerome Powell and the Fed uh, do cave in and pivot very soon. But uh, <clears throat> everything I'm seeing at the moment uh, doesn't tell me that is going to happen. So that liquidity event that we're talking about that Brent Johnson talks about in the uh, dollar milkshake theory seems to be playing out. And right now what's happening in the gilt market, uh, treasuries everywhere, uh, bond markets everywhere. You know, back in 2020, I said, don't buy bonds. They're the biggest bubble I've ever seen. And they're the worst, most disgusting asset class I've ever seen. Gilts have lost 52% of their gain, oh, 52% they have lost. They've wiped out all their gains that they've made in the last decade. So, you know, for so-called safe haven bonds, especially government bonds, supposedly a safe haven asset, I don't think so. And so we are seeing liquidity event happening. I think we're going to see more volatility in the precious metals market. Um. <clears throat> also we're seeing uh I, I don't know about you guys let me know in the comments below but i've had a few people come up to me <clears throat> recently and, and say steve you're gonna hate me but i had to sell some gold and silver well, i've said well firstly i don't hate you but tell me why and i said well with mortgage rates rising with inflation biting uh our cash flow is being hit. And once again, at a household level, it became a liquidity event. They needed liquidity. Their cash flow had been hit from rising mortgage costs and rising inflation. They had to sell some gold and silver to raise some, some dollars, some liquidity to pay bills, to do what they needed to do. I don't know, you guys, have you guys seen it? I'd love to, honestly, please leave a comment below if you've seen that, if you've experienced yourself, or if you know people that have been forced to sell some assets, whether it's gold, silver, or anything else, to raise dollars, to raise uh, liquidity, uh, because <clears throat> inflation and rising yields have impacted people's cash flow. We're seeing it in our mortgage business. Refinancing is through the roof. Uh, debt consolidation, it's through the roof. So anyway, that's what I'm seeing in the uh, silver market. The other thing to mention is you look at the... Uh, uh, open interest, it's very light, very, very light, which tells me there's a lack of liquidity out there. Uh, and when there's uh, light uh, open interest, it tells me also that the paper price is ver very easily manipulated. So anyway, that's my thoughts and, and opinions. I'd love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Really do appreciate it. Take care, guys, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut. And just a reminder, the information provided in this video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Nothing on this channel constitutes as financial advice. The information in this presentation is no substitute for financial advice, and all investors should seek advice from a licensed financial advisor having regard to your own objectives financial situation and needs.